Okay, we're back. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech. It's the four o'clock block, and we're talking about shopping centers. And it's a rhetorical question. Our shopping centers had an end in America. And there are indications of that. And Stephanie Sophos is the real estate diva that we follow through the years. And she has appeared many times on Think Tech. And today we would like to talk with her about, about uh, shopping centers and malls here in Hawaii and elsewhere. Welcome to the show, Stephanie. So nice to see you. Thank you, Jay. It's always nice to see you. So what, what's going on? I mean, you know, we, we opened Ala Moana, didn't we? And people are going down there, aren't they? And, and I guess that turns the whole thing on, or does it? Uh, no. I mean, everything's, it's going to be slow to come back. And a lot of tenants are hurting. Some won't come back. There'll be a lot of tenants who just won't reopen. That's a concern. You know, when you shop retail, you expect the retailer to stay around. When you buy something from a given seller, whether it's retail or online, you expect that retailer to stay around because if he doesn't stay around, you can't get service. You can't get it again. You don't have anybody to call and complain to and all that. So you want constancy. You want continuity in retail. So what are the indications, though? I mean, how do you know this? How do you know that some of those retailers are, are not going to stay around? Um, you know, your mom and pops, your local people are having the hardest because your, <clears throat> your national and international, uh, uh, retailers, they have a scale of economies that they can, they can survive. And when one store is hurting and another store is doing well, they can balance their budget by, uh, by their numbers. But when you have a small mom and pop store and it only has one, uh, one or two shops, if, uh, if things go bad uh, and you're not, and you can't open and you're down for three, four months, but you still have rent to pay, which is something we need to talk about, uh, you, you, would not, you, don't have the, you don't have the depth of cash. Even, uh, even the really wealthy uh, national retailers and international, they might have a billion dollars in assets, but they don't have a billion dollars in cash. So they're kind of hurting and scale it down to your local realtor, your local retailers, they're not going to survive. And the restaurants, my God, you'll probably see uh, 60 of 60 percent of the restaurants fail in the next six months. Mm, wow. So, um, yeah, I'm so, you know, the, the whole thing about reopening is sort of dissolving into um, what we call it, pause and pause could easily. We had 47 cases today. This is this is not good in Hawaii. Um, yeah, but they're yeah. not. How many are dying? I think we've only had nineteen. No, died. no idea. No idea. Yeah. Yeah, nineteen less is way less. Yeah. But it could be greater. We'll see. You know, the more cases, the more risk. But let me let me say this though. You know, you talk about shopping centers, and you talk about mom and pops. Um, in both cases, the landlord has all the leverage, and the landlord says to this prospective tenant, except maybe a national tenant, he says. I want your guarantees. I want mom and pop and I want the owners of this local business in my shopping center to guarantee. And, and they have no choice but to guarantee if they want to come in, they have to sign. And so now you have a guarantee and you have a default and you have a, a big delinquency. I mean, even two or three months at the rates they charge in say Ala Moana or even in some of the other smaller properties, um, it's a huge amount of money and it falls on the individuals. And now you have a, a second tier, like a waterfall, the second tier, and these people are gonna wind up with a, with a judgment against them because that, you know, nobody is gonna be forgiving about this. Uh, they got their, what do you call it, fiduciary obligations to go after the guarantor and they do. And the guarantor really has no defenses. I mean, are there any defenses that a, that a, that a guarantor could put up? Because this well. is- this is this is where the government has to get involved, and in and it's going to be it's going to, unfortunately it's going to take a few years. But how can you, as a landlord, demand a hundred percent of rent when you're mandated by the government that you can only be thirty or fifty percent open? You don't you can't use your store one hundred percent, and the government has mandated that you close down. So how are you obligated to a landlord? And right now they are because there's nothing, there are no pandemic clauses in leases and no one expected any of this to happen. So it has to change, it has to change. And right now 
it should be the landlord should be negotiating and they should do, but see the landlords are tied. They build a shopping center for let's say $500 million and they base it on getting a, an annual return of rent. And so when the rent and the, 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 the banks will allow them to borrow based on that rent. And so when that rent goes down, that affects their ability to pay. And they're not gonna lower the rents on the tenants because that would affect their, their obligations with the, the banks. So it, it's a cha- it's a, it, it goes down the line and the banks are not forgiving to the landlords. It's just like in the residential, you know, Governor Ige has said, oh, no, there is gonna be no uh, uh, eviction. Well, if you don't pay, if the t- land- tenant doesn't pay, how is the t- landlord gonna pay his mortgage? He's got a mortgage. If he goes into default and they say, well, there's, there's a recovery, the banks will let you pay down the line. That doesn't mean anything to someone like me or you. You still have, you're still obligated under your mortgage to pay. And who's gonna pay? And how do you get your tenant out to get somebody new to pay? It's very, very complicated now. Well, it reminds me of uh, something that was reported in New York maybe 30, 45 days ago about how tenants were banding together, as people do, uh, and going on rent strikes. And uh, even tenants who could afford the rent were going on rent strikes and they weren't paying the rent. This was their way of, I don't know, protesting that domino thing. <clears throat> and the landlords, in many cases, the landlords were by the skin of the teeth. You own a small you know, apartment building, you own a small you know, three or four story apartment building. You don't have a lot of resources. It's your, it's your stash. That's your, that's your big legacy right there. And if your tenants aren't paying you, you can't pay your mortgage on it. Now the whole thing begins to collapse. Um, and, and actually the tenants are doing really well because they're not paying and the landlord doesn't have the money, the resources to go after them, or maybe he should, or they, he, she should. Um, but what you have is, a, is, is chaos, uh, chaos in the marketplace. And the banks are the ones, I gotta say, the banks are the ones left holding the bag because right. they can't collect on that, on that mortgage. Right. So then what happens then? What happens when the banks can't collect? What do they do? Uh, they will foreclose and then they'll sell the assets for 10, 15 cents on the dollar. There's a lot of people who have cash right now. I mean, look, Warren Buffett is at a hundred and what was it, 185 uh, billion dollars in cash or no, no, I'm sorry, a million, 185 million. And he just bought a, a, a whole petroleum company for 10 billion. So they have the, they have the money. There are people looking for deals. And unfortunately, you're going to see several um, in another year or so, you're going to see several major people uh, die. Look at uh, So the, an example is Tubman, who built Alamona, uh, excuse me, who built International Marketplace. Tubman was in contract to close with Simon. Simon is the biggest shopping center owners in the, in the world. And it was a $3.5 billion transaction. To, as soon as this pandemic hit and Tubman's uh, shopping centers went down the tubes in, in, in uh, rents, Simon backed out. Now there's a major lawsuit uh, as to, to uh, make the deal happen because they say you're breaching your contract. And Simon said, hey, we, you guaranteed us X amount of rents and income and they're no longer there. And in the foreseeable future, they won't be there. We want out. So now you're going to see Tubman, who owns International Marketplace, go into some real financial straits. And the International Council, the, shop, uh, the International Marketplace, that's a dead shopping center. It never should have been built at that size. But the re- ground rent with the Queen Emma Foundation was so high that they had to maximize the square footage. And they built this monstrosity, this three-story monstrosity that will never, ever be successful. You can... Uh, I might, I might be long, dead and long gone 30 years from now before it does, it makes money, but it might not ever make money, just like the Aloha Tower. Remember that fiasco in 1990? They said, oh, we're gonna build this and people will come and they had the highest rents and it was maximum property and 
the, the developer had to pay so much and how many times it's been sold four times and now they basically have written it off and they have HPU there. What that's insanity to have a retail oceanfront property and you've got uh, a, you've got a, a, a university there. That that is the worst case scenario for a, for a retail establishment. Yeah, but that's an example of what could happen to shopping centers and, um, and when, when when everything goes downhill and then you have a foreclosure of the mortgage uh, to the to the shopping center owner um and then and then you have uh, the tenants they can't pay and the shopping center can't get new ones in you have to you have to change the use such as what happened in aloha tower so you know here's alamoana it's got these problems palm court is never going to work in this environment in this economic environment never um so the question is what happens i i try to visualize this stephanie but i need your help well what's going to happen is that they're going to the first thing they're going to do is build another big tower where macy's is that's the first thing they're going to do so condos. what they're yeah condos condos or condo hotels whatever because they have to utilize the space that's not being utilized and um if you have and think about that if you have a base of condominiums around you then you have a, um, a direct market that will utilize your shopping so you they have right now uh, park lane high end they have one ala moana high end and if they build this one on the corner they'll have three major condominiums that will have concierge who will go and shop for them and high high end and that shopping center is very high end you need you need those kind of uh, um, uh, condos and that's why kakaako that whole foods that is down in kakaako it's one of the best stores in the nation because all of those wealthier condominium owners are going right there and they you can well you could you could shop for your groceries and have dinner there and that will be the case again and mirror men's were just the, the restaurant was doing gangbusters. It was all the urban center, uh, the village. But now you have another component that's happening in that um, there were 10,000 shopping centers in the United States. And about five years ago, they started to break down and people didn't want to go to shopping centers. They wanted to go to specific places like their butcher, like, like our parents and grandparents did 50, 60 years, 100 years ago. And they wanted to go to the candy store and they wanted to go to the drug store. And so the department stores started to go down, 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 and the shopping center started to go down, down. And in many places like in Colorado and North Carolina and South Carolina and Florida, these shopping centers lost everything. They closed down the tenants, they resold, and now they're um, residential uh, projects. And that's going to happen too. It's, it's going to happen. People don't want to go to shopping centers as much because they have the convenience of of people of amazon coming to them in two days and a lot of people are afraid to go into big crowds i mean i i i, might, I have to say for myself personally i'm i'm never afraid of anything but i am a little concerned in going to where masses are because i don't know how their their hygiene is i know my hygiene but i don't know theirs and i religiously wear my mask whenever i'm outside Except when I'm eating, I, I couldn't work that out. Mm. Yeah, well, eating is another issue. I mean, I bet the food court is empty right now. Well, they uh, don't have, yeah. People are afraid. That's the other thing. We have to get past this. And uh, uh, people are getting sick with that pandemic. We see numbers are going up, but there are less people dying. So what's happening is the young people are getting it and not the older people. Because the older people are state who have the money are staying indoors but how long is that going to last when is it come when does it spike up where people are going to be dying again because their grandchildren are coming to visit them exactly the young people you know may be invincible they think they're invincible but every time they have contact with somebody older and uh you know who with a compromised immune system or existing medical problems they're they're, they're not doing that person any any service and yeah. that's and that's got to happen. That's got it's got to filter through that way. It starts at one part of the demographic and works to the other. So I think I agree with you that the people with the money are the ones who are at home, um, yes. and they're the ones who have to you know shop in order to keep Alamoana alive. Right. But what you said a minute ago, Stephanie, was interesting. So they're building condos, and that that makes the assumption that condos are still 
marketable, that people still want to come here and buy a condo for you know astronomical money. Um, and even though, you know, in the past, don't you agree that people bought those condos, part of the reason they bought those condos was they could shop. Hawaii was a great, you know, sure we have the beach and all that, but Hawaii was a great shopping destination. Now, sorry, it's not. So are those condos still as valuable? Are they still as saleable? Yeah, I think, so what I think is going to happen, Jay, is that you always ask me for predictions. What's going to happen is you're going to see a changing of the way we live. And, um, and for example, office space is a dead business. I can remember Andy Freelander talking 10, 15 years ago. We've got to build another uh, high rise. We have to build it because we're, we're going to be uh, saturated, too saturated. We've built the... Um, first one bank building and that was the last big one and that was 10 years ago and we need to build bill 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 and now what you see is 1132 bishop which had the uh, u.s bankruptcy court there they're going to close that down as a as a as an office and they're converting it to uh apartments and condominiums mm -hmm. so you're going to also see that happen with shopping centers you're going to see the condos around the shopping centers do fine because it's easy to go shopping, but also to cocoon at home because you're gonna have concierge service. So Instacart and Safeway delivery uh, and Pizza Hut, those Uber Eats and grab and go, they're all gonna do phenomenal business going forward. And it's a whole new um, type of uh, model. And they are going to, and the, and the people in these condominiums are also going to be down easy to walk to the beach and swim and then come home. What you're going to, and so you're also going to see more um, housing in your suburban areas grow because a lot of people want to get out of the city. So you're seeing across the mainland, New York, New York and Manhattan, it's like a ghost town. People are going to the Hamptons, they're running, they're going to Long Island, they're getting out of town as fast as they can. And the, here, what I've noticed is that the single family homes have not had any problems for, um, for uh, lack of value. In fact, they're still going up. Your condominiums, your condominium, your townhouses are doing all right. It's just that they're, the, how, the more these condos, which are these bigger, more expensive, have a large space. When you have large space and you can cocoon, you're gonna be fine. It's where you go into these micro, uh, uh, Howard Hughes is building these micro apartments. And remember they were touting that three years ago, that this is the living, the new way of living. We're gonna have 300 square foot apartments and people are gonna be dining out and eating out and it's the urban, it's the urban village. And well, those are gonna have some problems because you can't be there 24 seven with your wife and two kids and not kill each other. So yeah, that's no. gonna happen. And you're going to see a, it is going to be a model that people are going to shift to whether they like it or not, whether they want to or not. It's going to happen. So talking so that what that says to me is that uh, is that you know decent uh, residential will will will, uh, Prevail. will persist, and uh, that that's a market that um, you, you know we will be okay in. Uh, but what it also says is the the retail guys just tracking what you were saying. Take Ala Moana. Alamo one is going to have to shrink. Am I right? It's not going to go away completely. You know, that's an interesting. Uh, there will be some shops. Uh, yeah, you know, that's an interesting question. That's a very interesting question. Um, will Alamo want to shrink? Um, the Royal Hawaiian Shopping Center shrank uh, to fit it. At one point, it was 425 square thousand square feet, and they couldn't get the third floor to work. So they and the second floor was dead. So what they did is they started to cut the back end of the of the stores and use it for storage. So when you look at their GLA now, they don't. It's not 425 when it was built in 19, uh, 1980, 1986, 1984, something like that. It's now 350 or 70. They took out 50,000 square feet. 50,000 square feet is like. Um, uh, a quarter of Kuala Mall or like um, uh, like um, uh, Neo, uh, Neo Valley Shopping Center. Mm -hmm. So it's a pretty good size center. 
or half a, a Costco in Hawaii Kai is 50,000. So you can get the idea of the size. And so, um, well, all I'm on it, I don't know. I, I think that that's gonna be an interesting play because again, they're so heavily debt, uh, have so much heavy, heavily debt from them from their morgue from their bankers you know all moana is now uh geez it used to be a million it's a million four square feet of, of retail space a million four and then you have the the um the office spaces around it and so it's a it's a city within a city oh yeah and and if you uh you look at the value prior to covid and all that say the end of 2019 it was several billion dollars right. that thing because right. they had been building it all along it's been every time you look another wing another increment uh, yeah so. I, I'm, I'm concerned i would be concerned for alamoana but they're so big maybe they'll survive but i know that a lot of the um smaller people are going to survive you know the the, the med that medical the building alamoana building they have mostly dentists and doctors. Yeah. You're gonna probably lose out of the dentists that are here, you probably lose 20% of them, 30%, because their people are not gonna go for their weekly or monthly because people are, again, are afraid. And the people who have money are your older people. And if they are afraid and they want a cocoon, it's gonna affect business. I'm, I'm really concerned for the mom and pops because the PPP is gonna run out. There'll probably be another wave but again, what I said a moment ago, the, the change of attitude, the change of thinking, the, the paradigm of the model is all gonna shift. So even if they survive this whole pandemic thing, can they survive three, four, five years from now because the model will change? I don't know. I, I'm not quite, I, I don't believe they will, but I'm, I'm hoping to be wrong. Well, I wanna track on one thing you said earlier, and that is that people, aside from Amazon, you know, and the two day delivery phenomenon, which is, going to change, is changing, has already changed our world. Um, you were talking about these small shops that people wanted to have, like their parents had years ago. Right. Um, a local delicatessen, uh, uh, I don't know, a shoe shop, just a standalone. Do um, uh, you see this as happening in a standalone? And if so, where? And what about those little little pocket shopping centers we have, aside from Ala Moana, you know, all the way out in every little town off the, all the way to Waipahu um, and, and east as well. Uh, those regional, what do you call it, regional shopping centers, what's going to happen to them? It's not the same phenomenon as Alamoana, and maybe it could accommodate those small, you know, old-fashioned shops. Where are they going to go? Yeah, well, again, you have, you, have, uh, re you have regional shopping centers. You have super regional, which is in Ala Moana. And then you go down to regional, which is Windward Mall and Kahala Mall. And you go to communities, which, uh, which is Hawaii Kai and, and Kapolei and, um, and uh, Ni uh, Ni uh, Neo Valley. And then you have retail centers, which are maybe three or four people. And I just lost you. Are you still there? Yeah. Oh, I lost you, but um, you have three or four people that uh, um, um, that are in that that retail center, and uh, and then you have and so I think small retail centers will uh, will do okay. I think small retail centers will do okay. I, I, I'm I'm concerned about your your reach your um, you know your your strip centers your strip centers where you have maybe five people, five retailers there. I don't know how they're going to go. Uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm kind of questioning how that's going to happen. Um, I do think that a lot of, like, I think Kahala Mall is in for a real uh, big change. I think a lot of their tenants are going to go out. I don't see how they're going to survive uh, for the majority um, because they just are too small and the rents are too high. They're going to have to really lower their rents. Which is uh, what's going to be hard. Um, and I don't know what the bargaining position is. We have yet to see the way that works out. I mean, for example, you know, we were talking before about the contracts. Um, what about Act of God? That enters into this conversation, doesn't it? Is, is coronavirus an Act of God? Couldn't it be? Has anybody made that argument? Certainly, there's no reference to coronavirus in any of these lease documents or mortgage documents, but there's always a reference to Act of God. 
Yeah, I think that's, well, that's, a, that's being questioned right now. I mean, is, is a pandemic an act of God? Everybody's, uh, people are wondering about that. I, I don't know. I mean, I certainly think any new lease being written today is going to have some type of clause about the, a, a pandemic, you know, or, or even government influence. I mean, when a government comes in and steps in and takes your, uh, um, uh, closes you down, forcefully closes you down, that isn't a big issue. That's a huge issue. And I, I, I really feel for the retailers how, and, I, and I've talked to retailers and I've said, has a landlord given you a break? break? Has he discounted your rent? Has he given you, uh, has he said that you're going to, um, uh, uh, is he gonna uh, take off your percentage? What is, what is he gonna do? And every, everyone, everyone, and I've talked about 12 and different retail places, we are not going to get a discount. They are going to defer the three months or four months and tack it on to the back end of our lease. And so we didn't have to pay for these three months, but we'll have to pay for those three months after our lease expires. It automatically will be um, extended for three months. Well, that might not, that's not going to help a, a, a retailer. It really doesn't help them, especially when you're still uh mandated to um only have uh 10 people in your store or, or use 50 percent of your store or in the cases of bars and restaurants what is it 30 percent mm -hmm. she has so many questions so um, one question is uh, what what do you think of for planning purposes um the percentage of old business you need to have for retail for restaurants in order to stay in business you know, I mean, it wouldn't be 5%. You couldn't do that. And it probably wouldn't be 10 or 15 or 20%, maybe, maybe 30%, 40 Where's the break even to, to allow you to stay in business in terms of revenue that you used to have? That's a tough question. But, you know, in, in restaurants, it's, they go, they, they have to maximize the capacity because in the food, food doesn't really make them money. You know that food is only, uh, there's no real profit in food. It's they make their money in the alcohol, and and when you're when you can only use thirty percent of your so most people need a hundred percent of their store in order to make a profit, a hundred percent. So when you're down to thirty percent, you're not making a profit. They're, you're losing money. I talked to a restaurant uh, yesterday. A restaurant last year they were doing five hundred thousand dollars a month in sales. Uh, in June of last year, they did 500,000 in sales. They did, la they did for June of this year, 135,000. They did, um, they are projecting the, uh, for June, uh, July of last year, they did 600,000. They're projecting for this month, if they can, if they make uh, um, 200,000, they'll be lucky. It's a large restaurant. I said, uh, are you making money? He said, we're bleeding, we're bleeding because you have to have, the thing that people don't understand is that even though you have 30% of your restaurant operating in the, uh, in the front of the house where people are sitting, you still have to have 100% of the back of the house operating. You still have to have your dishwasher. You still have to have your busser. You still have to have your cook your, or your chef or your um, sous chef or your, your, uh, your um, uh, dessert. Uh, queen, you know, it, it just, you cannot make it and you're paying for all these people full time to be there. And then now you have the, uh, they have these new uh, restrictions and precautions that they're mandated and how they clean. So that takes another person full time to do the cleaning. So it's very costly and you're operating at 35%, your, your gross sales are 35% of what you were making. We all know you're going to, you're going to be dead in another couple of months, you can't do it. You know, in the best of times, it was always a, a long shot to make a restaurant work and most of them don't work. Uh, everybody has uh, high expectations. They go in because they like food <laughs> and they go in and make a restaurant and, and so many of them fail. I'm sure you've seen that. So really what, you know, what, what I get out of this is if, if, if somebody came to you, Stephanie, then said, look, I, I really like food. Uh, I think this is a great opportunity. Um, I want to I want to get into a restaurant. I know a lot of them are failing, but I think you know the, the there's an opportunity in in the in the in the transition here. I want to do a restaurant, Stephanie. 
what would you tell them? Run, run fast, run hard. <laughs> Just run away. You know, the other aspect is if you, you know, if you, you work with shopping centers and leasing in shopping centers, and one of the big things is, is tenant mix and to give the impression uh, to people who come in that this is a robust, active, you know, experience in here and there's so much going on and to draw them in and, and draw the money out of their wallets and all that stuff. And if you walk into a shopping center, you know, and a third or, or more of the, of the shops and restaurants are closed, that has the opposite effect, doesn't it? Oh yeah, people are gonna think, well, um, you know, what's going on here? Why is it not working? Why are people not uh, here? What's wrong, what's wrong? You know, you said about the restaurants. So historically restaurants, out of 10 restaurants starting in one year, six of them would fail within the first six months. Now that's historical information that hasn't changed in uh, 25 years. And then you, so six out of them would fail. And out of those, so there'd be four left. And two of them would fail within the first three years. So that's eight. And the fifth, the other two would probably, one would last five years and the, the number one would last maybe seven or eight years. And then after seven or eight years, they'll be gone because the, the taste of people change. They want to rotate out, they want something. A lot of them, uh, TGI Fridays failed here in Hawaii because it was here for 25 years. It was under new management. But then when people started, that was mom and dad. Well, mom and dad got engaged. I don't want to go and hang out at that place. I don't want to go where mom and dad are. <laughs> Zippy's, Zippy's is the only one that has survived for all these years. And I always think that's interesting because their food is pretty mediocre. And um, in my opinion, and but it's cheap and it's good and it gets it fills you up and it's it's survived it's survived but something uh, like a mirror men mirror men might not be here in 10 10 years they've already been here for 10 years uh, look at look at ryan's 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 had a great life it lasted 26 years and then they're gone because nobody wanted to go to the same old place that mom and dad and grandma went to. so yeah. it's going to be a very very and so now you throw the pandemic in there and uh, what used to be six people dine in restaurants dine in, in uh, six months, it's going to be eight or nine. So it's very, it's very concerning. I mean, people don't get it. I'm adjusting my, my pillow here. <laughs> well, you know, Stephanie, you, you, a lot of these places where they couldn't open during the lockdown, we're doing, um, you know, pick it up, pick up your food. We have our kitchen working and we can make the same menu items we made before. Uh, and or we'll, we'll deliver to you. And truth is they didn't need a whole sit down restaurant to achieve that. So when this all shakes out, it seems to me the restaurant business here and elsewhere will be different. And you don't need the same square footage. You just need a place to cook. And yeah. it could be in the back end of Chinatown. It wouldn't matter where it was because uh, either they'll pick it up or more likely there'll be all these services that, that will deliver. So the, the restaurant industry is going to change. You're going to wind up eating at home or in, I don't know where else, but at home mostly. Don't you think? And in a few years time, that's what, that's what will happen. Don't you think? Well, there'll, there'll be, there'll be dine-in restaurants always because there's always going to people want to go out, but how many will have the discretionary income? Those restaurants that you talk about who had takeout, they did, they just did that so that they could get the PPP and keep their employees, uh, uh, um, uh, and keep their employees. And um, I talked to a pizza a, a guy, a pizza guy in um, in uh, Koolina, and he uh, he was doing um, seven thousand a day in sales. And with the takeout, he was doing three hundred, four hundred dollars a day, from seven thousand to three hundred. That's he not can't sustainable. Survive. Yeah. And he and he still had to pay the same rent that he uh, was whether his store was open or closed. And it's not sustainable. And so you're right. A lot of people, a lot of restaurants will be in back alleys of Kalihi and serving and take out. But the dine-ins will be um, will still be around. But uh, I doubt if they'll be as big as they are now. I mean, you know, the trend was when when Ryan's went out two years ago, the trend was 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 already in the process where 
big restaurants, which were 10 or 12,000 square feet, were going down in, in size. And the average restaurant was 3,500 square feet. And now with this pandemic, it might be going to uh, go down to about um, 1,500 to 2,000. And you have a very tight organization and you have smaller, smaller um, tape uh, seating capacity and then you just churn people out. Like the pig and the lady, there is a very small restaurant and you have to make reservations to go there. And it might be that, that prototype. Um, you know, uh, Cheesecake Factory has 18,000 square feet. I mean, that, you know, think about it. And to get a perspective on it, think about an average house in Honolulu is an average size is 1,100 square feet. So this is 18 times what you would, a, a normal family of five or six would live in. Right. So it's and huge. We don't have a lot of tourists coming and we won't for a while. And that was feeding Cheesecake Factory. Yeah, but see, again, under scale of economies, because they're so successful around the world or around the United States, and they're a publicly traded company, they should be okay. And they do have that takeout with the cheesecakes. People love to buy those cheesecakes, and they're so damn expensive, but they're good. <laughs> One last question before we run, and that is, um, okay, so shopping center is under tremendous pressure, and they're probably going to uh, change their use and um, find another way to make that land work. Uh, it won't be easy on anyone. Um, and retail, hard. Restaurants, hard. Um, what about these big box stores? They're sort of in the middle between, you know, the, the regular retail that we have and, and the Amazon that delivers in two days or faster now because they're so efficient. Um, what about the big box stores? We've got a number of them. Hawaii gets along on big box stores in many ways. People shop at Costco and Best Buy and any number of those. Um, how, is, how is this going to affect them? Um, they, they do have good models. Are those models sustainable in the time of COVID? Uh, Costco is definitely a success. They've actually, they actually doubled their numbers in sales. And they, they because they're, you can get a, it's a good bang for your buck, so to speak. And so they are thriving and will continue. Sam's Club, same thing. Anybody who had a, a, a card, you know, if you're, if you're a, a member. So membership type of organizations, those will survive. Target survives because they can, they have everything you want. I, I, you know, I have to, I have, I have to tell everybody, I'm a retail expert. I've been to um, Target only twice in my life because I just don't, <laughs> It's just not my cup of tea. It's, it's a matter of taste. It is a matter of taste. And everybody says, you don't like Target. What, how, what is wrong with you? But it, and it, that's, uh, where's your French? Where's your idea? And I, it's, what? it's just not my cup of tea. But also my cup of tea, my cup of tea is more of the a balance of Nordstrom where you could get a good meal and then go shopping. A needless market, needless markup, which is, Needless, uh, Neiman Marcus, they're already yeah. in bankruptcy. Yeah. And so, um, and they're not going to sur survive. I mean, your luxury big uh, department stores are going to have a really hard time. Macy's is going to have a really hard time going forward. Um, but your big box, if you're, if it's a, if it's a membership group, I think they'll be fine. But I don't know about Best Buy. Best Buy is a uh, sell, um, uh, Lowell's and, and, and Home Depot, they did great during the pandemic. They're, people are building houses, rebuilding their houses during this time. So home improvement, I, I have no problem with. Uh, Costco and Sam's Club, no problem with. Uh, uh, grocery stores, no problem with because they'll, people want to shop. The problem is going to come forward is that if you just want to if you want to buy clothes, if you want to buy shoes, if you want to buy a crock pot, if you want to um, uh, buy book, a book, if you want to buy records or, uh, see that dates me, that shows how old I am. If you want to go and buy, um, you, it, it, uh, it will, that paradigm has, has shifted and many of it will be gone. So, um, that going forward, it's going to be a very interesting next 10 years where we'll be. But the shopping center business, you can end with, it's going to be very, very challenging. And in Hawaii, 
we're about five or six years behind in the thinking. People still love to shop. You know, uh, uh, they call it uh, uh, retail therapy. It's still local people love retail therapy. So they'll be okay. The retail shopping centers will be okay here for a while because people love to shop, but a lot of retailers won't be. So we have to hope for the, uh, we, we know that some stuff is coming, but we have to hope for the best that things will come back and, and people will make money again. Well, Stephanie, thank you so much. Stephanie Sophos of SL Sophos Realty. We really appreciate talking with you. You're so wise and so experienced and so into it. I really enjoy these conversations. I can hardly stop, but we're out of time. Thank you so much, Stephanie, for coming around. Thanks for having me, Jay. I, you know I love you, and I've loved you for 40 years, so you call me anytime because I'll tell your wife, you know, if I have had a crush on you for years. Yeah, we're on the air, Stephanie, but thanks anyway. <laughs> Aloha. You, you take care of yourself.